This video will show you how to connect a master cluster combo to a slave ITRT2 distributed controller and then connect that to an MDR SE OSDP reader. There are two reasons why you may need to do this. The first reason is AP Lite doesn't support Ethernet door controllers. If you require an additional door controller at an AP Lite installation, it must connect to the AP Lite master controller via RS485. The second reason is maybe this is a Primo or Access Portal site, but the closest Ethernet socket is over 100 meters away. In this case, you must run an RS485 cable from the remote door controller to a master controller that is plugged into the Ethernet. In this example, the master cluster combo is mounted near an Ethernet socket, and the slave ITRT2 is mounted at the remote point near the door where the reader is needed. Here are the cables you will need. Category 5 or 6 Ethernet cable with RJ45 plugs long enough to be comfortably routed from the master combo cluster to a suitable Ethernet switch or hub. Two twisted pair screen Mala cable with conductors no thinner than 22 AWG for the OSDP reader. We recommend Belden 8732. RS485 cable between the master cluster combo and the slave ITRT2. For this we recommend two, two core screened Mala cable with copper no thinner than 22 AWG. Prepare the RS485 cable to link the master cluster controller module to the ITRT2 slave. Cut a length of two core shielded Mala cable long enough to comfortably follow the route from the cluster controller module to the slave ITRT2 allowing 30 centimeters extra each end, no longer than a thousand meters total. Strip back the outer sheath by six centimeters both ends. Strip the colored wires to expose six millimeters of copper. It is recommended you use bootlace ferrules for connections to the controllers. Twist the copper strands neatly, apply the ferrule, firmly crimp a ferrule to each of the four ends of the cable. Remove the cover of the cluster controller module to access the terminals and dip switches. Dip switch settings only take effect on power up, so we'll begin this process with both the master and slave controllers in the power down state. Fasten the master end of the RS485 cable to the DC RS485 port on the cluster controller module. In this example you'll see we have a red wire into the A and a blue into the B terminal. If you use different colors, it's recommended that you are consistent with your A and B colors across the site. It's good practice to also connect the screen drain wire to the SHD terminal, only on the master end of the cable. This will minimize the effects of electromagnetic interference. Plug the Ethernet cable into the socket on the cluster controller and route it to a suitable Ethernet switch with cable length no longer than 100 meters. If this is a small installation running AP light, set the cluster controller mode switches to 0100. If you're working on a larger site using Access Portal or Primo, set the mode switches to 0110. Power up the cluster controller, giving it a minute to complete its startup sequence. Watch the status LED. When the LED is shining continuously, you will have network communications. Remove the plastic tag from under the RTC button cell if this tag is still present. Moving across to the remote end of the cable, again we connect the red wire to the A and the blue wire to the B terminal of the DC slash SC RS485 port on the slave ITRT2. Leave the screen disconnected on this end of the cable. Install an interline jumper for this RS485 port. If you have other slave units, daisy change to the same RS485 cable, only the last slave in line should have the end of line link in place. Using a star shaped connection topology is not recommended. Remove the plastic battery tank from under the RCT button cell if this is still in place. The top row of dip switches must be all set to off for door controller mode. Next, the dip switches for the reader port should be set to 0111 for OSDP reader mode. If you're only using one reader, leave the second port dip switches all off. This will save on allocated addresses and minimize unnecessary communication. 
Before we wire the radio cables, note that the radio to tag range can be impacted if there is a strong electromagnetic interference, if the readers are mounted closer than half a meter from each other, or if the readers are mounted back to back on opposite sides of the same wall. Cut a length of two pair shielded Milo cable long enough to comfortably route from the OSDP reader module to the reader location, no longer than 150 meters, as the reader's supply voltage will sag. Prepare the OSDP reader cable the same as we did the RS485 cable on the cluster module end of the cable with bootlace ferrules. No ferrules on the reader end of the cable. Replace the RTRT two lid and the markings will make wiring much easier. Here is the advised wiring convention for the reader port. Wire the red to 12 volts and the blue to ground. Wire the green to D0 slash A and the white to D1 slash B. Wiring the screen drain to SHD can help if there are concerns about electromagnetic interference. Wire up the reader end of the cables using the same colors you used on the OSDP reader module terminals. That's red to 12 volts, blue to ground, green to DA and white to DB. Return to the slave RTOT2 and power it up, allowing 30 seconds for it to boot up. The stats LED should eventually glow continuously, indicating you have communication via the RS485 cable. The OSDP reader should now be powered up and flashing yellow. This installation is now ready for setting up using AP Lite, Access Portal or Primo software. That will be the subject of other videos. If this video has been helpful, please click on the like icon.